Okay, welcome everybody to this uh, HCI MCA Prize uh, lecture. There were five uh, prizes this uh, time given to young researchers. By young, we mean uh, uh, not the young 12 years old having obtained the PhD. And one of them is uh, my uh, colleague, Proximat, Victor Manuel Rivero Mercado, who has done many contributions in uh, important contributions in exponential functionals of Levy processes and fluctuation of Levy processes. And since his PhD, very deep contributions on self similar Markov processes. So, first of all, I would like to congratulate Victor for this award. Thank you, Victor. Today he will speak about, I think, his favorite subjects and similar Markov processes. Yes. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the congratulations. Well, first of all, also, I would like to start uh, by thanking the, the MCA Prize Committee for awarding me with this prize. I feel really uh, very much uh, honored. But I would also like to thank to some people who had uh, helped me a lot during my career. For instance, Victor uh, Perez Abreu, Marimila Caballero, Jan Bertuan, Andreas Cipriano. I would also like to thank my uh, colleagues and friends, uh, my co-authors. And well, I would also like to thank the people in CMAT, all the, my colleagues, my friends, the students who, who do of CMAT a great place for, for working. So thank, thanks to everybody. It's uh, really nice. So I will start uh, this talk on self-similar processes. My idea is to give a panorama of the topic and try to put some emphasis on my contributions of it, but well, there are most, uh, a, lo a, lot of, a lot of other things to say. So, well, I will first, about, uh, will, I will first speak about uh, the contributions by Lamperti. Lamperti was a person who started a systematic study of uh, self-similar processes. So I will spend a long part of the beginning of the talk speaking about the results by Lamperti. Then I will sp speak about self-similar process, positive self-similar Markov processes, which is a subclass of self-similar processes. I will speak about uh, a transformation due to Lamperti that relates self-similar Markov processes and Levy processes. And then I will speak about uh, a problem of defining self-similar Markov processes starting from zero. And if uh, time allows, I will speak about the construction of uh, real value self-similar Markov processes, which is again uh, describing self-similar Markov processes via uh, Levy processes. I will, if uh, I can, I will speak about quasi-stationary laws and some results about exponential functionals of uh, Levy processes. So let me start with the uh, definition, the definition that I will be using all the time. So I will be considering an stochastic process. An stochastic process is, an, uh, is a sequence of uh, random variables indexed by time. Okay? They are defined in a probability space, omega f. f is a sigma algebra. ft is an increasing family of sigma algebras, the filtration, that gives us the information of the process until time t. And p of x will denote the law of this process starting at the point uh, little x. Okay? So we will say that this process is a self-similar Markov process it is, if it has uh, these properties. So we will ask that uh, the paths are right continuous and left limited. So that means that if I take a realization of the process, a path, that path is a right continuous and left limited uh, path with probability 1. I will also have that the paths are, are devalued. In fact, in most of the talk, I will concentrate in the positive real line, or when d is equal to 1. And we will also have that under Py, the process starts at y with probability 1. OK? So that is the basics. So for the Markov property, what do I mean by the Markov property? Well, what I mean is that to predict the behavior of the, of the, process, the process in the future, we don't need to know the past. We, do, we just need to know the position where the process is. So that is what uh, we mean by this. So the conditional law of the future of the process from time t, okay, conditionally on the past, 
is equal to the law of the original process, but starting at the position at time t. Okay? That is the Markov property. And in fact, the strong Markov property means that we can replace t by a stopping time, a time that we can uh, predict its value with the information we, we have at time t. Okay? And this, by the scaling property, I mean that there exists an index alpha such that the process time change by this form and change of scale of space in this form uh, has the same law as the process without any change of scale of time of space, but just starting at a different point. Okay? So by doing this trans transformation, I don't change the law of the process. I just, just change the initial point. Okay? If that is true, then I will say that the process satisfies the scaling property with index 1 over alpha. Okay? Or that it is an alpha stable, alpha uh, self-similar process. Okay, well, the, where does this process arise? I mean, this, the importance of this process was pointed by Lamperti by proving that the process, uh, the uh, self-similar processes arise as a scale, a scaling limits of the stochastic processes. By that, I mean that if we have a process Y and a function F such that when we define this new process Y Z of T by changing the scale of time and the, the, the scale of space, in this form, and we make uh, said tends to infinity, if this process has a limit in the sense of finite dimensional distributions, then, well, by, by the finite dimensional distributions, I mean that the, this vector in terms of y converges when set tends to infinity to this vector in terms of another process x, which is not degenerated, which is not equal to the path equal to zero everywhere, then necessarily this process X is a self-similar process. Okay? So it has a scaling property. For the moment, I don't care about the Markov property, just about the scaling property. And the function F is in fact a regularly varying function at infinity with an index alpha. By that, I mean that uh, F is a polynomial times a function L that has this behavior. Okay? And in fact, Lamperti proof that every self-similar Markov process, every self-similar process, sorry, can be obtained in this form, okay? So all the processes that arise as limits is, uh, are, are self-similar processes, okay? Limits of this form, okay? So I will, see, I will now mention a few examples. Well, the, the classical example is the Brownian motion. Brownian motion is a process that takes value in RD that starts at zero with probability one that has uh, continuous paths with probability one, and also that uh, it is such that its increments are stationary. So that means that the law of the increment, which is this difference, doesn't depend on the position of the increment, it, of, uh, of the, uh, no, the position of the increment, yes, it depends, it depends just on the length of the interval that we are observing, okay? And it has also independent increments, so that means if we observe the increment of the process along um, in, the pen, in disjoint intervals, then what we, what we obtain are independent random variables. Okay? And also we will have that Bt should follow a normal distribution. Okay? Well, in fact, a Brownian motion, a d-dimensional Brownian motion is, a, is the independent copies of a one-dimensional Brownian motion. So for this process, we can just uh, restrict to the one-dimensional case. And let me show you how this appears as a limit. There is a famous result by Donsker that tells us that Brownian motion arises as the scaling limits of uh, random walks. So we take an independent, uh, a sequence of independent identically distributed random variables that take values in, in R. We suppose that these random variables are center and that the mean that the variance is finite. And we define the random walk, which is just addition of the first uh, m random variables y. Okay? And we define a new process, x tilde n, by interpolating the random walk okay? in this form. And well, if we know the central limit theorem, we can, know, we can easily ask, what is the limit of this process when we make the same change of scale, the same normalization? that we do in the, in the central limit theorem. So when we consider this new process, x and t, 
and we divide by dividing x tilde n, taking it at time n t, and dividing it by sigma square root of n, which is this process. So it's just this part that we, that we see here. It's just the part that appears in the central limit theorem. Okay? So we would like to know what is the limit of this process when n tends to infinity. And the answer is uh, simple. The answer is, is a Brownian motion in R. Okay? And this uh, convergence holds in the sense of finite dimensional distributions. And in fact, it holds also in the uniform topology. So there is a functional convergence, weak convergence. Okay. Well, uh, and in fact, if we see, we don't need to take uh, n an integer. We can take any real. The only uh, thing that we should take care is that if we put here a real, here we should put the square root of the real. That's the only thing. So this is important because when we take the process xn at time tc and we divide it by 1 over square root of uh, c, that can be written in this form. So this process will also have a limit and will have the same limit as the process without any change of scale. So that proves that the Brownian motion has the scaling property with index uh, alpha equal to. OK. And we can prove similar results uh, in several dimensions. OK. Because we have a, a functional convergence, we can also prove that there are some functionals that uh, converge also. So for instance, take the maximum of the process, of the, of the random walk, and, uh, and take the, the random walk reflected in the maximum. So that is m minus s taken at time nt and normalize it by the by square root of n, okay? So by, by the functional convergence, we have that this process converges also in the finite dimensional sense and in square root topology, and that converges to a Brownian motion reflected in the supremum, okay? And this process is also self-similar with the same uh, index alpha equal to two, and it has the scaling, the strong Markov property. The, the Brownian motion has a strong Markov property because of the independence and the stationarity of the increments, okay? And this process inherits also the, the strong Markov property, okay? Well, in fact, that, is, uh, that result is not exclusive uh, to random variables uh, with uh, finite uh, variance. We could, uh, we could also have random variables or random walks with uh, a step distribution that have this behavior. So if alpha is between zero and two, the, the, the variance will be infinite, okay? And well, we can suppose that the mean is uh, zero again. In that case, we can normalize again the random walk, but we change the scale. We will divide by one over zeta, zeta to the power one over alpha, and that process will converge again. But the process, the limit process will be what we call an alpha stable process, okay? This process, will have also independent and stationary increments because the random walk has that property that has independent and stationary increments. And we can also have a convergence of uh, the, stable, the random walk reflected in the supremum. We again just change the normalization, okay? And uh, this process is again a strong Markov processes, a strong Markov process with the scaling property. So it's again an example of uh, our processes. Well, so the stable process, as I said before, is a process, well, I will take it uh, essentially real valid. It's a process that takes values uh, that starts at zero. It has right continuous and left, left limited paths, so. It's different to the Brownian motion. The Brownian motion has continuous paths. The stable process are discontinuous paths, just right continuous and left limits. So it has a lot, a lot of uh, jumps, big and small. The increments are stationary, the increments are independent, and it has the self-similarity property, okay? So this, this stable process belongs to the class of Levy processes. The Levy, a Levy process is a process that satisfies the first four conditions. So it has independent and stationary increments, and it has right continuous and left limited paths. So uh, this will come, this will appear later. Okay, there are other examples that can be found in the theory of extremes, for instance, when we, condition, when we consider the maximum of a, of a sequence of independent identical distributed random variables. 
And uh, well, Lamperti also studied other cases. For instance, he proved uh, that uh, the continuous state branching process is the scaling limit of a Galton Watson process. And there are a lot, a lot of examples that we can find in the literature about uh, stochastic processes. But well, there is in particular a recent article by Haas and Mirmont where they prove that uh, the scaling limits of non-increasing Markov chains that have some properties on their jumps are actually um, non-increasing cell, positive self-similar Markov processes. And well, with uh, Arnaud Sirijegus and Juan Carlos Pardo from CIMAT, we are working in a generalization of that paper, uh, removing the assumption of non-increasing paths. Well, so now I will speak essentially about positive self-similar Markov processes. There is another example with continuous path, paths, which is the Bessel process. The Bessel process can be just to uh, think as the, as the norm of a Brownian motion. Okay. So we just translate it from X and uh, take the norm to the square. And what we get is a one self similar Markov process. And in fact, it can be seen that it is a unique strong solution to this uh, stochastic differential equation. And we, just, we don't need to take uh, the integer in this equation. And that gives the square Bessel process. So it's again a positive self-similar Markov process uh, with continuous paths. Okay? And one thing which is interesting that will be useful later is that th this x can be taken to be zero. So the process can be started at zero. But we will see that later. Well, I said before, another, another example is a stable process reflected in the supremum or reflected in the infimum. Both uh, work. We can also kill a stable Levy process when it passes below zero, or we can make some transformations of this stable process. For instance, we can condition it to stay positive, so we can pull the, um, the path to go towards infinity, or we can also pull, uh, sorry, no, I said push for, for the conditioning and pull for conditioning to hit zero continuously. Okay? This is, uh, these are processes that can be studied in the work by Chaumont and Don in 2005 and in Chaumont in 1996. And there is another example that arises from a Brownian motion, which is the failure Brownian motion, and that can be constructed in the, follow it for, in the following form. So we take a Brownian motion, and we construct a functional of the Brownian motion, which is, um, in fact, it will grow when the Brownian motion is positive, and it will decrease when the Brownian motion is negative, and the slope of the decrease will be Q, okay? And we consider the process XT, obtained by time changing the Brownian motion by this uh, functional. So I just take BT taken at the inverse of this uh, functional, okay? And uh, well, this process has been studied by several authors, but uh, especially by Rogers and Williams in 1977. And let me give you a picture of uh, how this transformation is. So it, this is the path of a Brownian motion. Imagine this is the path of a Brownian motion. And so the, the functional grows here where the process is positive, decreases when it is negative, and so on. So it, does, uh, it has this behavior, okay? So when we take the inverse of that functional, what we find is that there will be a, lo a lot of jumps in this functional, because if uh, it, will decrease, it will decrease and then increase. So when I take the inverse, what, I'm, what we are doing is deleting some parts of the trajectory. So this, uh, the transformation, the, the failure Brownian motion, when we don't take this part, when Q is equal to zero, it will just look like a reflected Brownian motion, so the absolute value of a Brownian motion. So observe that this process is continuous. It leaves zero continuously, okay? The only thing that I did to get to that process was to remove all the parts of the process that are negative, okay? So I, I remove all these parts of the, of these uh, parts of the path, and, and I paste everything together by the, doing this time, of, this time change. But when I take Q equal to one, because there are some jumps here that will appear, what we will do is to remove this path 
of the process and paste again the path together, but necessarily we will have some jumps, okay? So what we will obtain is a process that looks like the Brownian motion when it is outside zero, okay? But when it is at zero, it jumps to the positive real line, okay? So it is essentially the same process, but it has a different behavior at zero, okay? Well, okay. So now I will speak about the, the transformation uh, due to Lamperti. So I give some more information about Levy processes. So, well, I recall the Levy processes are processes with uh, independent and stationary increments. And because of that property of independent and stationary increments, the law is characterized by the one-dimensional distribution, and that is characterized by the Fourier transform, which is given in this form. And this uh, characteristic exponent, psi, is given in this form. So this tells us that a Levy process is essentially the addition of uh, three processes, a Brownian motion, which uh, has this, this characteristic exponent, a compound Poisson process, so a process that stays constant for a while, and then it jumps to a position that is determined to this pi, by this pi, okay? And the rate when it jumps is also determined by pi. And there is another part that comes from the small jumps of the process, which is a local martingale. And well, there is this term, which may come from the normalization we have here, or may also come from a linear part. But there is an extra term here that is usually not uh, there, which uh, is the killing term. It's just telling us that the process may jump to minus infinity, because I am considering Levy processes that take values at, man, at minus infinity. At man, and that term minus infinity will be an absorbing state. So whenever the process jumps there, it won't uh, come back, okay? And this measure pi should satisfy this uh, integrability condition so that this term is uh, in, uh, finite, okay? So what is the, the bijection of Lamperti? Well, this can, it can be described as follows. Take a, a real value at Levy process, well, R union minus infinity Levy process, with minus infinity being a cementary state, and define a new time, so this tau t, which will be a random clock, okay? So we take tau t as the inverse of this functional, and we consider a new process, xt, which is obtained, obtained by taking the exponential of the Levy process at the time tau times, uh, at time t x minus alpha, multiplied by x. Whenever this tau is finite, this tau will be finite when this t is smaller than the terminal value of the additive functional, and it will be equal to zero if uh, t is uh, greater or equal than this term. And well, this process is a process uh, that is absorbed at zero, and because the Levy process is a strong Markov process, this process will inherit, the process X will inherit the strong Markov property because what we are doing is to observe the Levy process at the stopping times. So it will preserve the, the strong Markov property, and by construction, we can easily see that this is a self-similar process, an alpha self-similar process, okay? And well, so that's what we say here. So we have the scaling property, we have the strong Markov property, and it takes all only positive values. But uh, when it starts at zero, it stays at zero forever, okay? And that, that will be, that is a problem. We will see that later. Okay, so let me just give you some insight about the time change, okay? So imagine this is the path of the process I, the Levy process I. So it starts at zero, and then it moves very closely to zero, and then it goes down to the negative values, and then it goes up to the positive values. So this, uh, this time change, this functional, will increase linearly when the process is uh, zero, near close to zero, and then it will continue increasing, but uh, at a lower rate when the process is negative, and it will continue increasing at the highest speed when the, when the process is positive, okay? So take the inverse of that. The inverse of that will look like that. So by taking the, the time change tau, what we are doing is 
we are accelerating the path when the process is negative. So because this interval of time is being squeezed into this small interval of time, okay? And we are slowing down the path when the process is uh, at large values because this, uh, this interval of time up to here will be stretched up to this uh, interval, okay? So this, uh, this is the effect of the time change of Lamperti, okay? But essentially what we are doing is to observe the same path, just at a different uh, rate, okay? And well, if we do that with the process, this is a compound Poisson process, if we do the transformation, it will look like that, okay? So the negative values, all this part around here, is squeezed into this part, the same to this part of the process, it's a squeeze in this part, and this part around here is a stretch into this part, okay? So this is uh, the, 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 the consequence of the transformation of Lamperti, okay? Well, and in fact, the transformation can be reversed. So if we have a self-similar Markov process killed at the first heating time of zero, then we can construct a new, Levy pro a new process psi by this transformation, again, by a time change which has the opposite effect. So it will accelerate, uh, it will slow, out, slow down the path when it is close to zero and accelerate it when it is far from zero. And what we'll get is a, is a Levy process that takes values in R union minus infinity. So there is a minus missing here. Okay. So we can go from one self similar Markov process up to a Levy process, okay? And that is helpful because we can do contributions in both sides. Well, well, this was to give you some ideas of why this uh, is true, but uh, I think it's not uh, worth doing it. And the, the question that arises there naturally is, well, okay, if uh, I have the cell similar Markov process, how do I find the Levy process? Or if I have the Levy process, how do I find the self similar Markov process? I mean, I know that the, this can be done by the time change, but I can, how can we get that explicitly? And in fact, that can be done by means of the infinitesimal generator. So the infinitesimal generator is this operator that appears as the derivative in time of the, the semigroup, okay? So the semigroup is just uh, the probability of going from x to some position at time t, okay? So it's this, okay? Well. And this gives us, this allows to describe the behavior of the process in some a small instant, uh, a small interval of time. And when we do that to the self-similar Markov process, we will have by the scaling property that these relations will be true. I mean, we, if we start the process at x, let me just go back a couple of slides, yes. When, when we start the process at x, by using the, the scaling property, that is equivalent to start from one, multiply the process from x, and run it at a, as a different, at a different scale, t times x to the minus alpha, okay? So essentially, we just need to observe the process starting from one, and then do this uh, change, okay? So when we do that to the semigroup, we have this relation, and so the infinitesimal generator starting from x should be related to the infinitesimal generator starting from one, by this relation. And this f of x is, th is this function, okay? So to characterize the, the process starting from one or the infinitesimal generator starting from one, we can use the result by Bolkonsky in 1958 that tell us how the infinitesimal generators are related when we do a time change. And that uh, result of Bolkonsky tell us that the infinitesimal generator of x is given in, in fact by x to the minus alpha, as we said before, and the infinitesimal generator of the Levy process, but in, in a transformation of f, which, which is f to the power to an exponential, uh, composed with the exponential, and the infinitesimal generator of x has this uh, form, okay? So there is a term coming from a Brownian motion, which is accelerated by this rate, a linear term, which is accelerated by this other term, and a term of the jumps, accelerated in this form, 
Uh, so we, if we are at position x, to move to some other position, we can make a jump, in this, which is described by this term. And we can also jump to zero. And that is given by a constant uh, k, OK? OK. Which, is, which are just all the terms that we saw in the characteristic exponent of the Levy process. OK. So for instance, when we take a Brownian motion, kill that zero, we can use that result. And uh, we can see that uh, the Levy process, which is behind, is actually a Brownian motion minus um, a drift, one, one half. If we take a Bessel process of dimension given by this formula, the, the Levy process, which is behind, can be written in this uh, form. So it's a multiple of a Brownian motion plus a drift. OK, so the drift will make that uh, the process will drift to minus infinity when the dimension is smaller than, than 2. And it will oscillate or drift to plus infinity when the dimension is bigger than 2. Okay. So in fact, any continuous alpha self-similar Markov process can be obtained as a Brownian motion plus, as a Lamperti transformation of a Brownian motion plus a drift. Because all the self-similar Markov processes, all the, all the Levy processes that have continuous paths are of this form. These are the only possibilities. Okay? And the process which is behind the stable process killed at the first passage time below zero or conditioned to hit zero continuously or conditioned to st uh, stay positive was characterized by Caballero and Chaumont in 2006. We can also use this uh, form, the formula that I provided before to find, for instance, the form of the Levy process which is behind of a stable uh, subordinator. A stable subordinator is just an alpha stable Levy process with non-decreasing paths. The infinitesimal generator of that process is given by this form. If we make a change of variables, we find the formula that we have in uh, Volkonsky's formula, and we, have, we find then that the Levy process, the subordinator which is behind, has, has this uh, Levy measure. Okay. Well, so with this uh, result, this transformation, Lamperti found that there are just three types of self-similar Markov processes. So either it uh, hits zero in a finite time and it does it by a jump, independently of the starting point, and that happens if and only if the Levy process, which is behind, jumps to minus infinity. Why? Because we're observing the, the path of the process, and then it jumps. So the process, the Levy process, which is behind, is obliged to jump to minus infinity. Okay? And the other possibility is that the process hits zero in a finite time, but it does, it, it does it continuously. And in order to do that, what we need is that the, that this, uh, that the lifetime of the process is infinite, so it never jumps to minus infinity, but still it is obliged to drift toward minus infinity so that the exponential goes to zero. Okay? And the final possibility is that this t0 is infinite with probability one, so that we never hit zero, and that will happen when, again, we never jump to minus infinity, but the process has a limb sub which is infinite almost surely. Okay? And well, this relation of the first hitting time of zero and this exponential functional has been quite, uh, use, quite useful because these exponential functionals appear in several areas of uh, applied probability. So this relation with self-similar Markov processes has been used to obtain information about the exponential functionals and vice versa. So we will see later that this exponential functional plays a very important role in characterizing the form, the process leaves zero, or uh, finding a stationary distributions or other things. Well, okay. So in that paper of Lamperti, where he, where he obtained the, the transformation, the bijection with Levy processes, he asked two questions, and both of them are related to how do we define how to define the process starting from zero. So the first, the first case is. Suppose the process never hits here, okay? So how can we define the process starting from zero? Okay? We saw that if we say this is just equal to zero everywhere, that is not useful. So we saw, that, for instance, that the Bessel process can be 
they started from zero in a no trivial way. So a natural way to do that is to take the limit of the process starting from x and oblige x to go to zero. And well, so the question is now when this limit is not degenerated, it's not uh, a path which is equal to zero everywhere or something else, but not useful. And that problem was uh, studied by Bertuan and Caballero, so nearly 26 years later than uh, Lamperti, in the case where the process has non-decreasing paths. So the process which is behind, the Levy process, has uh, non-decreasing paths. And they prove that a necessary and sufficient condition for this to be non-degenerate is that the mean is uh, finite. And later, the problem was also st studied by Bertuan and George in the case where the process tends towards infinity. Okay. And again, they prove that the necessary and sufficient condition is that the mean is finite. So one could expect that the condition for this to be non-degenerate is always that the mean is, not fi is, is finite. But in fact, Caballero and Chaumont consider the general case. So when we only ask that the limb soup is infinite of the process, and that they prove that the necessary and sufficient condition for this to be non-degenerate is that another process has a finite mean. Who is that process? Is what we call the upward ladder height subordinator associated to psi. That is just the process that describes the supremum of the Levy process. Okay? And well, in fact, this condition, this, this condition is satisfied in these two cases when under, under those assumptions. So we can see that uh, these two results, the result of Bertuan and Caballero and Caballero and Chaumont, tell us that in fact, to see if the process converges when the starting point tends to zero, we just need to see what happens with the supremum, if the supremum converges, okay? Well, in fact, the supremum can be seen as a Lamperti transformation of the Downward, the upward ladder high subordinator. So we wanted to give an explanation of this in a paper with uh, Loic Chaumont, Andreas Cipriano, and Carlos Pardo. And the idea is the following. So take the process X, suppose this is the path, okay? So we want to know what happens when the, when the starting point tends to zero. The result of uh, Bertuan and Caballero and Caballero and Chaumont tell us, well, essentially you just need to see what happens with the supremum, so I just observed the supremum, okay, which is the Lamperti transformation of H, and then I see what happens when X tends to zero. This will converge if and only if the mean of this process is finite, okay, so I have this limit. So how do I do now to pass from this process to the original one, okay? So the idea here is that these jumps, when, when I find these jumps, I have to stretch create some gaps and paste some paths of the process, like this. So I have the same path of the supremum, okay? I stretch the values and then I paste some paths which are the scorsions of the process from the supremum, okay? And well, so we just have to, to formalize this. So to formalize this, so to pass from here to here, what we need to do is to make a time change in, ter in terms of a local time, a, a time that tells us when we are in the supremum. And then we need something that tells us how to paste, how to do this pasting of the scorches. Okay? So to pass from, the su from X to the supremum, we construct a local time. A local time is essentially a functional that grows at the instance where the process is, cro is close to the supremum. So it's in fact this limit for some normalizing function that we can find explicitly. And if we take the process X time changed by the inverse of the local time, so we just observe the, the supremum, what we obtain is that this process H is the Lamperti transformation of, uh, the, Levy pro of the upward ladder high subordinator associated to Psi. So that tells us trajectorily how to pass from one process to the other. And well, this formula here is a, is a formula for the exit system that tells us how to paste the discursions from the supremum. Okay. And we can use that formula to, to, to pass from the limit of H 
to the limit of x. Okay. And so with that uh, tool, with those tools, we can prove this uh, theorem so that the, that the law px has a limit which is not degenerative and only if the mean is finite. And we can also find a law, an entrance law for the process starting from zero. So something that describes how do, how do we do to leave zero, okay? And this, well, it has this expression. And in the particular case where the process drifts towards infinity, we have this uh, simpler formula where we again get something which is related to the exponential functional. But this is the exponential functional of the dual Levy process. So we see that the exponential functionals are related to the entrance laws of uh, self-similar Markov processes. And well, this is a formula that was obtained before, well, all this formula that was obtained before by uh, Bertuan and Caballero and Bertuan and Jor, but uh, was missing in the general case. So this, it is more involved in the general case, but it is essentially the same idea. Okay. Well, this, uh, this idea of decomposing the process in the supremum or understanding the extremes of the process has been somehow the basis for a fluctuation theory of uh, positive self-similar Markov processes, which is in fact based in the same idea for Levy processes. And it has been well exploited in that uh, paper, in a paper also by, in collaboration with Chamont, where we describe the, the behavior of the process near the infimum, and also in another paper with uh, Cipriano and Pardo, where we describe the overshoots and undershoots of the process. And there are a lot of other papers that have been, has used the same ideas. For instance, there is a series of papers by Cipriano, Kuznetsov, Pardo, Patiz, Avov, and Watson, where they exploit these ideas of fluctuation theory to obtain what I find are very surprising and precise results for stable processes and exponential functionals of Levy processes. And uh, also, these ideas of fluctuation theory has been used by Bertuan and Savov to provide a trajectory, uh, another trajectory construction of uh, the law P0 plus. Okay. Well, so I said that Lamperti posed two questions. The, both were related to starting the process at zero. And the second one is for the case where the process hits zero in a finite time. Okay? So take a Levy process, psi, that either jumps to minus infinity in a finite time or that drifts to minus infinity. Okay? And consider the Lamperti transform of that process. So that process will, see, will hit zero in a finite time. Okay? So how can we construct a new process that is not absorbed at zero? So we would like to know what are all the positive self-similar Markov processes that behave like x, but once that they hit zero, they continue. Okay? And, uh, well, for which the state zero is a regular, regular and recurrent state. So whenever it hits zero, it's go, it goes back to zero, but also immediately to the positive axis and it continues visiting zero, uh, an infinite, uh, infinite uh, during um, all the time, okay? We will say that uh, that process is a recurrent extension, okay? And this is a problem that was, was studied by Lamperti in the Brownian case, and by Volia Piala under some uh, uh, assumptions, okay? Okay, well, just let me go back a little bit to the example of the Oh, this example. So this process that we have here is a recurrent extension of a Brownian motion killed at zero. But both of them are recurrent extensions. One of them is the one that leaves zero continuously, and another one is the one that leaves zero by jumps, okay? And that is uh, something that we will see in, for all self-similar Markov processes. We can have both possi possibilities that either leave zero continuously or leave zero by a jump. But we cannot have both possibilities together because they have different self-similarity index. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So imagine this is the the path of a recurrent extension. Okay. Well, there is a very important result by Ito that tell us that we can decompose the, that the path of the process into discursions of the process, which are these paths, and the set of zeros. Okay? And essentially, what we have is that this and this and this are copies of the same object. So I, they are just like independent, identically distributed random variables. Okay? In, fact, actually, in fact, they form a Poisson point process. Okay? And these paths are described by, by a measure which is not necessarily a probability measure. In fact, in this case, it won't be an, uh, a probability measure. But it's a sigma finite measure that describes this, uh, these paths. Okay? So essentially, what we have to do is to, in order to construct or to know what are the recurrent extensions, what we have to do is to find that measure that codes the whole process. Okay? And, holds, and codes also the set of zeros. Okay? Because the set of zeros is actually what is left when we remove the lengths of discursions. Okay? So everything will be code in this path, okay? related to the discursion measure. And well, this process should behave when it is outside from zero, it should behave like the original process. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. So whenever it is uh, above zero, it behaves like the process killed at zero. So essentially what we have to do is to say how to leave the process, how to leave the state zero. Okay. So this, well, this can be synthesized in this theorem. That telling us that there is a bijection between the recurrent extensions and discursion measures, but these are discursion measures that should have some particular properties. So the, the discursion, the measures should be carried by the paths which are cut lags, and that hits here in a finite time. It should have a Markov property. This is similar to the Markov property. This is telling us that when we are in a strictly positive uh, point, we behave like the original process. We need this condition of integrability in order to be able to paste together discursions, okay, so that we get uh, the set of zeros. And the final property is that this measure should have a property of uh, self-similarity. So when we take the measure n under the image of this transformation of a uh, scale of uh, time and space, we should obtain the same measure, but just changing it by a factor. Okay? That if we, if we are able to construct a measure like that, then we can use the, the theory of uh, Ito to construct the process by pasting together discursions, and what we will get will be a self-similar process. Okay? So the problem is uh, determining when we can construct th those, those discursion measures. I said before, there are essentially two types of discursion measures. Dot, those that leave zero by jumps and those that leave zero continuously. And discursion measures, measures that leave zero by jumps necessarily should have this form because of the scaling property. So we just take an initial point given by this formula, okay. well, by this measure, and take the, the measure of the process starting from that uh, uh, point x. Okay, so in fact, we'll have that a measure like this one will satisfy all the conditions that I said before, if and only if the Levy process which is behind satisfies this condition, which is in fact equivalent to have a finite moment for the exponential functional, and, in, and that is equivalent to have an excursion measure that leaves zero by jumps in this form. Okay? And for the, for the excursion measure that leaves zero continuously, a necessary and sufficient condition is that the Levy process satisfies this Kramer condition. Okay? So if this uh, moment is equal to one, then we can ensure that there is a unique measure that is carried by the paths that leave zero continuously. Okay? And it has uh, the entrance law will have this form, again, given in terms of an exponential functional, but an exponential functional of a new Levy process, the Levy process which is obtained via Gilsanov transform, 
And this is a result that was uh, obtained by, well, by me in 2006 in two papers and a paper, with, uh, a paper by Fitzsimmons. Okay, so that answers the question. Well, just to finish, I would like to, to discuss a little bit the problem of uh, having a similar relation, like a, the, a similar bijection, but in the case of real value itself, similar Markov processes. But, uh, okay, so what we want is to find a process such that when we take the exponential and we time change it, we get a self-similar process, okay? Well, and in fact, so we have this uh, diagram. So imagine you have a real valued self-similar Markov process. So see this process until the first passage time below zero. That will be, that's a transformation that preserves the scaling property and the Markov property. So this process, this part here, is the Lamperti transformation of some Levy process. Okay. And when the process passes below zero, when I observe this path until the first passage time above zero, again, this transformation preserves uh, the self-similarity property. So this part will be just a negative of the Lamperti transformation of some Levy process. And when the process jumps again to the positive axis, I will get a copy of this part of, the, of this path of the process. So again, this path is the Lamperti transformation of a copy of the, of the process I plus that describes the positive part, and so on. So these negative parts are, desc are described by a Levy process, psi minus, and the positive by another process psi plus, okay? So what I need in order to build that pro the process that I'm looking for is two Levy processes, psi plus and psi minus, and the positions where the process is jumping, okay? And that can be done by running a Markov chain, a Markov chain that tells us when to switch from one Levy process to the other. So I have here the Levy process I plus. I will run it up to an exponential time. Then I will move to a new position. I will now follow the process I plus on to, up to an exponential time that depends on the sign of the process. And I will jump to another position, again, given by this U plus U minus, okay? And that process is in fact, uh, well, what we call a Lamperti Q process because this problem was also studied by Q in a, pa in a paper in 1975, I think. And Q was a student of, uh, was a student of uh, Lamperti. Okay, but the description he gave of the process which is behind was uh, quite obscure. I mean, well, it was not uh, quite e explicit in terms of the Levy processes and so on. So, well, this process that I described is in fact a Markov process. And uh, that process, the Lamperti Q process, gives us the same transformation as before. So we have a bijection between real valid self similar Markov process killed at zero and the Lamperti Q process. That was done in a paper with uh, Henry Panty, who was a, a student, uh, a PhD student in CIMAT, in collaboration with uh, Loic Chaumont, who was a co-advisor. And, uh, well, these ideas have been exploited by several authors. In particular, Cipriano, Pardo, and Watson described the Lamperti Q process in terms of a Markov additive process, which is a process more easy to handle. And that helped them to use, to, to describe the um, density of the first kitting time of zero for a stable process, which is a very simple question, but not easy to, to answer at all. And then that is, well, the, the Bertuan, Doring and Cipriano in a work in progress, they are studying the, the entrance law of this uh, self-similar, real value self-similar Markov process when the starting point tends to zero. Because again here, we have a problem when, with the starting point equal to zero. And uh, in collaboration with Henry Panty and Juan Carlos Pardo, we are studying the same idea of recurrent extensions of uh, self-similar Markov process. Well, I think it's a good point to stop. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>